to our nation and to honor those during Black History Month. Um, just a reminder that these tiny little blurbs are not everything, right? So I really encourage you to go through and research these people, um, read more about their lives. If you want help looking for books, I would love to help you find one, or I'm sure your teachers can help you. And if we don't have it here, hopefully we can find you a website where you can learn more about people. All right, so today I have got two different people, one man and one woman, um, who were spies and helped our nation. So we are going to start with, ooh, I can't remember. I think it's the guy. Remember, I'm trying to do the timeline here. Um, and I believe his was, he was a, yeah, revolutionary war. Okay. So this is James Armistead Lafayette, circa 1748 to 1830, and he was a Revolutionary War spy. Okay. It says, not much is known about James's life before the Revolutionary War. He was born enslaved in Virginia, and his owner, who managed military supplies, taught James to read and write so that he could be a better worker. During the war against the British, James heard that any slave who fought for the American Continental's army would be freed if the Americans won the war. He got his owner's permission to enlist, and in 1781 was assigned to serve under the Marquis de Lafayette, a young French aristocrat fighting aristocrat, not aristocrat, aristocrat, fighting for the American cause. At first, James used his knowledge of the Virginian landscape to transport messages, but then James and Lafayette had a better idea James could spy on the British. Posing as a runaway slave, James went to the British camp commanded by Lord Charles Cornwallis. James helped lead troops through the unfamiliar land. No one suspected that he could read and write, so generals and other soldiers talked about their tactics in front of him, and he was given access to British maps and plans. Secretly, he memorized details and reported back to Lafayette. James became so trusted by the British that he was asked to spy on the Americans. He agreed, but gave the British only false information. Equipped with James's accurate information about British troop size, strategies, and morale, the Continental Army defeated the British at Yorktown, effectively ending the war. Imagine Cornwallis's surprise when he entered Lafayette's headquarters to surrender and saw James there. After the war, enslaved people who served as soldiers were freed, but James had not technically been a soldier, and he was not freed. He petitioned for his release, but was ignored. It wasn't until Lafayette wrote a letter commending James's service that his petition was granted, and he was freed in 1787. James took the name Lafayette to honor his commander and friend. He lived the rest of his life as a farmer and a family man, secretly one of America's greatest heroes. So that's James Armistead Lafayette, 1748 to 1830, revolutionary spy. Okay, so we're going to switch. This one um, is a little bit different timeline here, but still a spy. Okay, sorry. Okay, so this is a Civil War spy. Here's the picture. This is Mary Bowser, circa 1840, um, and no one is sure of her the date of her death. So it says, very little is recorded about Mary's life. What we do know is that she was born into slavery in Richmond, Virginia around 1840. She was purchased by the wealthy Van Loo family as a companion for their daughter, Elizabeth. The Van Loo's were no ordinary family in the South though. They had a secret. They were Northern spies and abolitionists involved in the secret underground railroad. Prior to the war, when Mary was a teen, Elizabeth granted her freedom and arranged for her to receive her education in Philadelphia. 
Mary wanted to assist the Van Loos in their efforts against the Confederacy. At that time in the South, it was illegal for a Black person to have an education or even to read. For that reason, no one would ever suspect that Mary was a threat. As a slave, she could hide in plain sight, so she agreed to go undercover as a slave in Jefferson Davis's Confederate White House. While cleaning, she would steal glances at confidential memos, and while serving dinner, she would eavesdrop on conversations between Confederate officials. She passed information about the troop movements and army plans to Elizabeth, who passed them along to the Union officials. Rumor has it that Mary had a photographic memory and was able to read a page once and recite it back, word for word. After the war, Mary educated freed slaves and traveled around the United States giving speeches. For a long time, she was careful to conceal her true identity using a variety of aliases. Eventually, she disappeared completely, but she is remembered. In 1995, she was inducted into the Military Intelligence Hall of Fame. That's Mary Bowser, circa 1840. Pretty interesting, and these were two new people to me, so I am definitely doing some more research and reading them. Great to hear Hope you guys have a great day, and happy